Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 16th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out Washington, Oregon, British Columbia here off to the right of the screen. The colder air aloft, you can see its arrival into Vancouver Island as we speak. It's going to swoop down across Pacific Northwest, across the Intermountain West over the next couple of days. Then our eyes turn out to the atmospheric river. This big plume of moisture across the Pacific Ocean is going to burrow into western BC and include portions of Washington, then eventually the frontal system will pass through and then we'll take a look at the extended forecast as we go through the video here today now looking at things right now this is the doppler radar overlaid across pacific northwest we got rainfall all the way from california up to british columbia that cold air aloft you can see the popcorn cumulus there rolling in we're gonna have some lightning potential here today some convergent zone activity some snow for the higher terrain as well Looking at SeaTac yesterday, 59 degrees, 61 the average high for this time of year, 3 hundredths of an inch of rain officially. And we're going to do a little bit of catch up here over the next few days. Are we going to get back up towards average by the end of the month? Good questions. We'll continue to watch that through the extent of forecast. Now looking at Spokane National Weather Service. They are talking about the potential there for Stevens Pass and Washington Pass. I-90 can also see a little bit of snowfall as well. But look at that, 80% chance of 2 plus inches, so you got to watch out. Um, Going across places like Highway 2, the higher passes are going to be subject to this snowfall coming up here. So, you know, it might be all good and dandy until you get to the higher portions of the pass and all of a sudden you're running into some very slick conditions. So heads up for that. And the best snowfall accumulations will be mainly 4,000 feet and above, although it could be dropping down towards 3,500 feet or even down towards I-90 Snoqualmie Pass, which is about 3,000 feet briefly. So looking at the snow over the Cascades here, this is the Oregon Cascades. You can also see we're going to have the rainfall impact travel here you know plant debris moving around it could clog some of the drains and whatnot and some cooler nighttime temperatures moving in nice graphic here from medford and national weather service we take a look at high elevation snow, northern Rockies. This is Missoula National Weather Service, and the snow level could be dropping down towards 3,500 feet. So people across the backcountry, Rocky Mountains, heads up, British Columbia, and off towards Yellowstone as well. You know, you're going to get some snow-covered trails and backcountry roadways, so heads up for that. Now, taking a look at the Tempest Weather Station, I highly recommend this station, especially as a standalone station. You can see everybody else with one of these stations. You can click on the individual locations and see what everybody else is getting. Very fun. This is the one I have installed on my roof you can see the wind updating here every i think three seconds or so and we've got a lightning detection system with it we'll see if that goes off today stores the data for you in the cloud uv index solar radiation temperature you can click on all the stuff and it graphs it for you so yeah if you want one of these click on that link down below to save 10 percent now taking a look at the wave action here i'm going to put this into motion and you can see we are dealing with that bump here as we bring that first system in here. But the second system is going to be a bit stronger. So as we go through Friday morning, you'll see the waves increase across southeast Alaska, Haida Gwaii, western BC, Vancouver Island, and eventually making it down towards the Washington coastline here. And by the time these waves get here, it looks like they're going to be weakening as they reach the Oregon coast. But just a heads up for the bump in the wave activity as we go through this weekend. Do not turn your back on the ocean. If people get caught up in this wave action, these sneaker waves, and just the plain old big waves that visit the coastline here this is the biggest ocean in the world once the storms start raging here across the gulf of alaska things can get wild so anyway watch your kids and pets especially now taking a look at 500 millibar heights this is the upper levels of the atmosphere about 18,000 feet this is that colder air aloft so this is our, our initial system bringing that very cold air aloft, thunderstorm potential, mountain snow, some gusty winds, and then we get a little bit of a break here across, especially across portions like Washington and Oregon. So atmospheric river really starts to burrow right into the western coast of British Columbia. And that's going to be with us as we go on in through Sunday. And eventually that frontal system will push south as it's weakening down across Oregon. And then we've got some interesting stuff as far as uh, some uh, very cold air aloft moving down out over the Pacific Ocean. We're going to see what it does out here. Is this going to get completely cut off? or is it going to eventually just stay out here for a day or two and then eject across the western coast of the USA? Good questions. We'll go over that here some more in a moment. Now, looking at the atmospheric river scale, very specific definitions uh, based on duration and the strength of the integrated vapor transport. And I'll show you the map here starting right now. So if we scroll on through here, you'll see we've got this frontal system swinging through today, the cold air aloft. You notice not much IVT with that. But if we scroll off into the future, see that plume coming across the Pacific 
Pacific Ocean and just moving towards Vancouver Island. So you can kind of look at these colors. Sorry, I'm messing this up a little bit here. You can look at these colors and you can see those totals and the values over here and you can kind of see how long it hangs out over any given area. These are three hour chunks I'm going over and then you can basically guesstimate the strength of the atmospheric river moving across your area. And again, there's the AR scale based on the IBT and duration, very specific definitions for these atmospheric rivers. Now, let's take a look at what the European says as far as precipitable water. You can see the colder air aloft, drier air aloft, but it, it, it's still causing shower activity and mountain snow. But you can see the much uh, more intense plume of moisture moving in as we go through the day Friday, Friday afternoon, kind of hangs up a little bit here across western BC and some of western Washington. And then eventually that frontal system passes through as we go through the early portion of next week. Now, if we take a look, I like showing the temperatures a lot as well. This is the GFS. I've been showing you the European. This is at 18,000 feet. You can really see that bowling ball here, this polar lobe swing down across Pacific Northwest. And then you can see the warmer air, how we warm things up at 18,000 feet in advance of this atmospheric river. And you can kind of see that sharp temperature gradient there aloft, pumping that atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest before that frontal system finally sags across the region. And then you can see this cutoff low get hung up out here across Pacific Ocean. And then this next lobe wants to come back here and kind of pick that up and maybe eject another system as we go through the extended forecast. So we may remain active as we go on into the following week or so. Um, looking at total precipitation, this is last night's European Ensemble mean. This is the average of all 50 Ensemble members. Put it into motion and you can see the precipitation happening today and tomorrow. Showery, better amounts across the higher terrain, some snowfall with that. You can kind of see the lesser amounts there across from the Columbia Basin. But then the atmospheric river, you can see it showing up and really starting to bring some heavy amounts across western BC. Starts to clip the northern Cascades and the Olympic Mountains here. And then we go on into about Saturday afternoon. Look at some of these huge totals for Vancouver Island, some of southwest BC. And you can see it is clipping portions of northern Washington that eventually that front will sag south and bring some of that rainfall down towards Oregon. But you can see big precipitation differences in the Oregon Cascades versus Vancouver Island and southwest BC and Washington right in between the sharp precipitation gradient here as we go on in through about next Monday night. And I want to show a wider view of things here because I want people to stop being alarmed by the term atmospheric river. It is a specific definition, as I've already mentioned here. And if I put this into motion, you can see the atmospheric river that we are going to be dealing with here. And an atmospheric river, you know, for example, if it comes from uh, the Hawaiian Islands here, people will call it a Pineapple Express. That's just a nickname for an atmospheric river. Pineapple Express is not a scientific definition. Atmospheric river is the proper scientific term for this. But you can see this across the southern hemisphere. See these atmospheric rivers out moving about here. You can see one off the coast of Japan here up towards the very far western Aleutian Islands. So these atmospheric rivers are always present in the atmosphere. They become a big deal when they impact portions of land and they kind of hang out there. But you can see them moving and churning around. And this is just part of the heat transfer of planet Earth bringing that warm, moist air up towards the polar regions. So uh, atmospheric river, yeah, that's don't be afraid of the term. Um, taking a look here, 500 millibar temperature. I do want to show you the, uh, the high resolution models here. So you can see as we go through today, the very cold air aloft really rolls through as we move through Thursday mornings. We're going to keep some thunderstorm potential with that. That's going to sag across the Intermountain West there. I always like looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere. You can see this little bit of a polar lobe, this bowling ball moved down all the way across the Southwest USA there as well as we bring some warmer air aloft with the atmospheric river after that. Now looking at total snow, 10 to 1 ratio. So here we go. We're scrolling through the day today and you can see some of that snow flying, especially as we go through tonight, things cool down and even some snow for the Oregon Cascades, some Eastern Oregon, higher terrain, Rocky Mountains here. And then you can see that frontal system draped down across Nevada for example. But you see, we should get a nice little coating across the Olympic Mountains as well. But again, watch out tonight for the dangerous uh, travel conditions across some of the passes and on in through Thursday morning, especially as the snow is actively falling. A little bit closer look at things here. I'm going to speed through that. And you can see it does show a little bit for Snoqualmie Pass. So watch out going back and forth on I-90. You know, it's going to slow things down most likely. But you see Stevens, better amount. Stevens Pass is around 4,000 feet. Snoqualmie is 3,000 feet. So if you're wondering why Stevens generally gets more snow, it's because of that higher terrain. Now, taking a look at lightning flash density potential. So as we go through today, you can kind of see how this starts to emerge across Pacific Northwest. As we go through the afternoon hours, as the colder air aloft arises, uh, 
arrives. And then we get the convergent zone activity here, mainly north of Seattle. There could be a couple of strikes with that, but you can't rule out a lightning strike there across some of the coastal regions. And then as we go through Thursday afternoon, some of that threat will shift to east and move out of the area. Not a huge deal as far as thunderstorms are concerned, but you could hear a couple of rumbles of thunder out there and some heavier rain as we go through the day today. Now, looking at the North American model, this is 60 hours out with a Doppler radar may look like. This is our initial frontal system here, bringing some rainfall. And that colder air aloft arrives as we go through tonight and on into tomorrow morning. Again, thunderstorm potential. You could see a lightning strike or two across western Oregon with that activity as well. And that eventually sags down across the Intermountain West. And then at the very end of the run, you'll see the atmospheric river starting to move into western BC. And it's going to be pouring. A lot of rain is going to be falling across western BC before it start to hit Washington and Oregon. We're going to be right on the southern periphery there. And of course, we could warm things up a little bit there because, you know, you're bringing in that warmer air with the atmospheric river. And on the south side of that, it's not going to be raining for a lot of areas. And you're going to get some, maybe some lenticular cloud activity off the mountains and some warmer conditions, at least until that frontal system starts to sag south. Now, 100 meter wind speeds. This is the European model last night. So we got some blustery conditions coming for this afternoon, especially east of the mountains, east cast slopes and you can see the northwest wind on the coastline there nice and brisk but then that stronger system look at that thing approach southeast Alaska and bring some strong winds with it this could be affecting the northwest Washington coast some of southwest BC and even down towards Whidbey Island Bellingham some of the coastal regions the southeast winds across the San Juans Vancouver Island up the Strait of Georgia and the west coast of BC all the way up towards southeast Alaska and if we scroll out a little bit further look at this wind shift out there associated with the atmospheric river the southwest warm moist flow with the cooler air behind it and that almost stationary front at times as we go on in through Saturday Sunday you can kind of see it bouncing around there about Saturday afternoon you can see that wind shift all the way down from the northwest Washington coast out across Pacific Ocean marking the boundary of that atmospheric river fun stuff now um, we looked at the composite reflectivity. We're not going to go over that again, but I did want to show you here the daily two meter minimum temperature. This is for Thursday, tomorrow morning, October 17th. You can see things, you know, we're getting into the fall season here. It's cooling down a bit. But as we go into Friday, look at some of the Intermountain West, just getting pretty chilly there. Some places are going to be dealing with frost and freezing temperatures. And then Saturday, we start to bounce back a little bit here as we bring this atmospheric river in. But then we may have a bit of a chillier air mass start to drop down the, across the region as we go to, uh, into the end of October. We'll watch that one here. I don't want to put too much stock in that just yet. But looking at daily two meter maximum temperature. So this was Wednesday, October 16th or Seattle. You can see some 60s for the Willamette Valley. There we go Thursday with this colder air aloft swinging down across the area. But then we bounce back a little bit here Saturday. And again, a lot of precipitation will be across western BC, but we're going to warm up a little bit here across some of Washington, Oregon. Then we go Sunday, Monday. You can see the frontal system drop down across the area there too. And then, you know, we're probably done with the very warm days here for the Pacific North. Northwest. We're not likely to see any 75 degree readings and sunny skies as we continue on into the fall months. Now, a little bit of a look at the extent of forecast. So I want to show you yesterday afternoon's European here versus yesterday mornings. We're looking at North America. we got Alaska, Washington's right there. And this is the same map on the right. So if we scroll through here, good model agreement with that upper level low moving across the area here. And then we set up the atmospheric river. And if we scroll off a bit into the future here, you can see the models have uh, some of that energy breaking off out here across from the Pacific Ocean. And the yesterday afternoon is kind of bringing that back in there a bit quicker. You see that system would eject back across the West Coast. That would bring precipitation um, back into the West Coast of North America here. And you can kind of see the troughing continuing on both model ones. But you can see there are some disagreements on how these systems are going to develop. Are we going to get a stronger frontal passage coming through here? All good questions. We're looking way off into the fantasy forecast there. So. Um, it looks like we're going to go through the atmospheric river and then potentially that uh, bit of energy dropping down at over the Pacific Ocean. We'll see what that one does. We're still looking a little ways off into the future. So we'll be watching that to see if the models can come in some better agreement what will happen after. So Snoqualmie Pass, as you're going back and forth, you can see there will be some gusty winds out there also, maybe some gusty winds as we go through this weekend with the atmospheric river nearby in that frontal system. Look at Quileute. So this is for Friday. You can see some of these gusts, 
you know, up into the 42, 45 mile per hour range. So you will notice the blustery conditions would be island. Some of the Insomma members have up towards 50 miles per hour as well. Southeast wind there. Bellingham, something similar. Looks like a gust 40 miles per hour, maybe a little bit stronger in some of these Insomma members. And it, this doesn't bode well, these frontal systems and atmospheric rivers around the area. So the best you're going to hope for here over the next few days is some kind of break during the evening hours where the sun sets and you can catch a glimpse of that comet. It. And if we take a look at that, this is the high resolution Canadian model. As we scroll through the day today, here we go about 7 p.m. Maybe you get lucky and catch a glimpse here for Western Washington, BC, Oregon. If you just happen to be in the right perspective there and some of the cloud breaks, you might catch a glimpse of that comet. Better viewing conditions, probably east of the mountains there. You know, you're getting some. Uh, rain shadowing effect out there so you might have a better chance if you move out there and then we go on in through thursday and maybe we'll get a little bit better viewing here as we go through thursday night if we can get a little bit of clearing here you know might catch the comet between the clouds so here's the six to ten day you guys had the breakdown and everything i'm just going to show you this here really quick maybe some below average to the end of october eight to 14 day yada yada it should come as no surprise but Anyway, yeah, exciting stuff. You can see the plume out there. It is on its way. Cold air aloft today. Thunderstorm activity. Mountain snows. Watch out for that. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.